so you're here at the Arm TechCon. Yeah. 2013. So yeah. how many times have you been to Arm TechCon? I've been uh, to Arm TechCon for about five years in a row. Every year? Every year. So what do you think about Arm? Arm is a company. Are they, are they product or the the uh, uh, ecosystem? You want me to cover all of them? Everything. Yeah, ARM has come a long way uh, uh, in the past years. Uh, the it's a licensing company with intellectual property, as you know, with different computer risk architecture, reduced instruction set computing architecture. And I'm from AT&T Bell Labs. We did some of the original work in some of these things, and then the company started. And they uh, uh, have uh, uh, added a lot of products, uh, starting from uh, what is usable on a mobile device, yeah. or wireless sensor networks, or uh, uh, even servers these days. And it, now RM is like everywhere embedded everywhere, present everywhere kind of a uh, uh, technology, uh, because when you say use the word ARM, it's a technology, the different companies implement them uh, and add additional uh, 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 intellectual property to it and capability to it, features, etc. And uh, uh, it's amazing that uh, in the last two to three years, uh, it has become a very uh, a formidable force in uh, the server industry itself because the servers are the ones which are there in data centers, they are in small enterprise networks, and they are in the cloud as well. So uh, uh, ARM is now uh, getting ready to become enabled for what is called software defined network, SDN. Abbreviated. Software defined network. What's that? Okay. Software defined network uh, is basically a. At this time, it is a, a good idea. Some implementations are there because it takes anything to be implemented and migrated in the, any industry. Uh, in which, uh, let's take example of data center, uh, where in a software defined network, the individual servers blades. Uh, 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 chassis, the storage, uh, uh, and the networking inside a data center, or the multi connection between multiple data centers, uh, uh, etc., are, are uh, location independent, brand independent, and also uh, everything is defined by the uh, uh, software uh, via controllers. Let's take example of Open Stack or Open Server in which you can put any server in principle, and uh, it is driven by a, a software controller, software management, uh, 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 which could be distributed as well as centralized, so that your data could be anywhere. Uh, your data could be processed anywhere. It could even be virtually done on a single processor. So that's the open storage, open processing, uh, uh, open servers, open networking. Open networking refers to uh, where the uh, network, where the traffic is going is not a single link, whether it is 10 gigabits, 40 gigabits, or 100 gigabits. It could be any one of the links. So, so what, what do you do? I'm a, a corporate advisor. I serve on the board of companies. I directly reported to Jack Welch of GE uh, and ran a big business unit in my early 20s. I was an AT&T executive. I was the chief strategist for AT&T, chief competitive strategist, R&D executive who ran a, a R&D business unit uh, called Government Research Programs where we uh, obtained funding and alliances from the different uh, defense and non-defense government agencies. And uh, when you say Bell Labs, yeah. what do you do there? What is that? Okay, Bell Labs was the, and I have to say was and is differently, right? Bell Labs was the R&D arm of AT&T, and now going back to 1983-84 time frame, when there were about 350,000 in AT&T and about 30 to 40,000 was in Bell Labs, which did fundamental research, 
with Nobel laureates who are my colleagues, etc. Fundamental research work in other areas, as well as systems development, application development, which is R and D compared to R, which is big R research. So, how, what do you, what's the main thing you do here? Uh, in, in now, myself, the here. In, yeah, in the Arm Tech Conference, I go to quite a lot of conferences as a keynote speaker, session moderator, you know, panel moderator, etc. Uh, uh, as well. Uh, but here, this time, I'm just uh, trying to observe uh, who has developed what, where are they, what stage are they, what is the difference between what you see on their website to what is reality, what they say on the stage to what is reality is important to us. Uh, a lot of times going to the exhibit floor is very helpful to know what they really have to do and what they're trying to do in the future. And one of the things I do in every industry is called gaps. In big data, I give a series of talks called big gaps in big data. Now I'm going to prepare one for big gaps in ARM technology and ecosystem. What, yeah, what's missing, yeah. right? What's missing? What's missing? Yeah, okay. In, in ARM as well. Can we pick up your bag? Oh, yeah, no problem. Let's just, walk. Oh, let's walk, okay. Yeah. So you say that uh, big gaps in the ARM ecosystem, what do you mean? Okay, in, in, let's take examples, right? Uh, if you talk about big data, for big data to happen, if, if what we need is quite a lot of uh, 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 the, the processing capability, database capability, uh, uh, and speed, power, those things become very big issues, right? And, and also the big data, for example, I'll tell you the issues and, 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 and problems in big data, yeah. right? So there are, uh, uh, the servers don't have the, the uh, location independence today completely as much as we want to have completely, right? Uh, uh, so that's a very important thing to have. And other issues, which is not technical only, are what's called the talent. Uh, because I'll give an example of why it's big data example I'm giving. Big data, our data is increasing at 70% plus compounded annual growth rate, CAGR. Which means that your resources also have to grow proportionately, right? That's very important, number one. Number two, memory, requirement is going to be very much, much higher than what we can provide from the industry infrastructure. For example, uh, uh, before the big data, data could have been stored in hard disk drives. But because of the speed that you need for response for big data, you need to have them in what's called SSD memories or flash memories you know, together. And, and there are not enough companies who can produce flash memory because Especially in big data, you need to have at least three copies, for example, Hadoop, of every memory. And every, everything is processed by three servers, three memories, and so on, right? And as well. Secondly, uh, uh, there are uh, copies of the same content and information starting from the web crawling area to staging area or buffering area and metadata, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you look at the wireless sensor networks, where you are collecting information for big data, you, there'll be a lot of data copying or duplication in a lot of places, which means that you need up to at least six times the data of whatever is being produced to be available in terms of memory, which is uh, memory industry cannot supply. Because memory industry cannot turn on a dime. You need to have infrastructure to be able to manufacture memories, uh, uh, put them together into SSD drives, and and you need billions of dollars. You know, you, if you have heard uh, 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 Eli uh, uh, Harari, who was the founder chairman of uh, 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 SanDisk, which is a famous company, and it was a very important thing. He used to also, also say that capital intensity. The next important problem that we will have is the talent. I'll give an example. USA, we need 400,000 data scientists in the next four or five years, maximum. And we are not even producing so many mathematicians, so many statisticians. How are we going to do it? Are we going to offshore? Each country is trying to grow and they need their own uh, people. So talent issue, people issue, but it's an opportunity for universities, training programs, colleges where you can teach, 
right, or uh, on campus teaching and so on. So there's a, there's a lot of gaps, challenges and opportunities. I'm giving example of memory only. Now it becomes the same thing with processor, uh, uh, data scientists, analytics, analytics people, etc. That's why everything is becoming still a sandbox in a lot of major verticals, except for Yahoo, or Google, etc., Facebook, which are big companies they started. And they will also have to have uh, uh, gobble a lot of servers, a lot of hardware. So what's going to happen in the future? Everything's going to work or it's not going to work? No, so we, 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 okay. Very, very good question, very good insight that you have now, right? What is important is to have what's called a industry vertical big data strategy for the infrastructure, hardware, software, people. And same, very important for countries. USA, we have a CIO, right? A very young CIO, may not have a lot of experience. A, a, there's a CTO in America, but we don't have a, a big data uh, 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 officer in USA. That's what we need for us to be competitive, for us to keep the jobs, for us to increase the jobs, for us to be able to fulfill what we want to do. So, thanks. thanks Thank so you a lot.